Hi guys, check out my new toy, the Chessman Elite Chess Computer, like they made them in the old days. And you know, I did the video on uh, the history of computer chess, so when I saw this, I just had to had to buy it and see if I could beat it. I have not yet played a game against it uh, because I wanted, you know, I wanted it to be a surprise for me as well as you how strong it is. I don't know how strong it is. Uh, on the box, it sort of, it just said, it just says 1800 ELO, but there's no reference to if that's meant to be FIDE or on what time control. And yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's probably not playing like a grandmaster, then they would have said that on the box. Um, so this is what it looks like. Let's see, does it have ni nice sounds? Yeah, maybe, I think that it's okay, but uh, it's not quite as, uh, impressive as like a real Staunton chess set um, but it is kind of kind of cool so I'm I'm going to uh, rotate it uh, like this and that's actually because of the lighting uh, that the, I figured out it's tough to see the light pieces uh, the white pieces unless we are like this just about so I will start a game in just a second when I have uh, checked out that uh, it all looks like it's supposed to okay I will press new game no I will press all and then I will press new game and then I think I'm supposed to um, put this on B3 because that's supposed to uh, give me, oh, I press level, excuse me, level. It's now on B1, but I want it on B3. I think that is the level, uh, the highest level. And then I press level again and we can start the game. I will play pawn to d4. And, okay, so I read here, there's a light here, g and eight. So it's the knight on g8, I press that down, and it goes to f6. So that is uh, a book move. So probably this chess computer has been uh, programmed with uh, with some book moves. Uh, I will play C4. Also I can see it, it responds immediately. So it's not thinking. So either it's very, very fast or it's just looking in the book. It's this pawn to G6. This is all completely standard. Um, I will just develop my knight standard fashion and oh wow it plays it plays the uh, Greenfeld defense wow okay so that it it for sure for sure for sure for sure um, it um, it has a built-in book that's actually a little bit scary uh, because I don't know the Greenfeld that much and I know there is a lot of theory on the Greenfield. Um, the move here is, I know from watching a lot of Peter Swiddler videos, the move is to cap jump. Oh, and that is when my opponent starts thinking, okay, that is interesting. So it was programmed up to move four in the opening. Um, and now it's thinking. Greenfeld is probably an opening that's a little bit tough for a computer to play uh, if it doesn't um, if it doesn't have like the first 
10 moves programmed in uh, so it, it does play the right move in night takes that is the correct move and then it's my turn uh, and I'll, the point here is I play uh, evil and my opponent is thinking again and uh, the correct move is to capture the knight so I capture with the c pawn and then play c5 and that is um, uh, that's the, basically the starting position from the Greenfield defense and then you know because then you undermine these pawns and you have a very strong bishop it's all about making this bishop here on the Vienkato diagonal it's all about making that very very strong okay it looks like it found the right idea it did find the right idea that is scary uh, I of course recapture we are still following theory um, so here it can play bishop g7 or c5 if it plays c5 I'm getting more and more afraid um, I will have to play bishop uh, e3 and or knight uh, f3 and the thing is that I don't know too much uh, theory you know what I will do I will uh, put a graphic uh, they'll probably already seeing that uh, on the screen with a 2d representation of the board so you can more easily follow what's going on and I will put stockfish evaluation alongside so you can see what uh, the world's strongest chess computer thinks about thinks of how uh, the ch this chess computer it's sort of little brother is playing and how I am playing uh, okay it plays bishop to g7 so it is uh, preparing pawn to c5 undermining uh, the center I think I'll just play uh, knight um, to f3 defending here c5 undermining my center and um, and then it will be followed up by the queen to a5 here and uh, and then pinning this pawn here that's uh, one of the major uh, themes of the Greenfield defense is the queen pinning this pawn here working together with this bishop on the long diagonal maybe I should get some sort of tool because uh, these pieces are quite small I hope you uh, I hope you can see what's going on uh, so opponents still thinking uh, while we are still in theory so it is sort of reinventing uh, the deep plate is that a saying outside of Denmark reinventing the deep plate I don't know Okay, it plays. Uh, okay, it wants to castle. Yes, it wants to castle. Like so. Um, that is a very good design, I think. Maybe I can play pawn to e5. Just making sure that this bishop is not that uh, dangerous. Um, Because if pawn to uh, e5 and when then we see c5, then that's not that pawn will not be working together with the bishop in attacking here the my center. So I, I'm very tempted to play this pawn one square forward. I'm very tempted to do that. Um, another possible move here is bishop to a3. Okay, because if we see pawn to c5, I can just capture that. And uh, it also means that this pawn can move because it will be pinned to the rook. Um, but something about bishop to a3 feels a little bit off to me. Um, of course, playing pawn to e5 is also a bit risky on my... Uh, because 
also I guess I could also just play bishop f3 um, and allow c5 um, bishop d3 c5 and then the bishop this bishop up here to e3 defending Bishop to d3 was that a huge mistake? Because the queen is now longer. I, I will play uh, bishop to e3 here, and uh, and yeah, I think my bishop here belongs on e2, and that's uh, that's simply me not knowing my Greenfeld. afraid of queen coming to a5 now pinning this pawn uh, also just attacking this pawn where i may have to play queen to d2 um so yeah maybe maybe i should just have played e5 when i had the had the chance and not allowed to sort of go back into uh, I should totally have done that, um, but it's <laughs> something weird about you know playing a computer. Uh, there's this whole extra layer of the fact that it's not a it's not a real opponent. It's just a piece of plastic and silicon, and um, yeah, it's a little weird <laughs> somehow. I don't envy you know when Kasparov had to play deep blue or something like that. I don't envy that. Existentially, such a weird thing to do. Um, okay, so my opponent is thinking a lot here. What uh, what other moves could it be? Okay, it is playing queen to a five, as we discussed, and um, I was thinking that maybe queen to d two. Useful here to break the pin and defend the pawn. So let's say queen d2, pawn takes, pawn takes. Uh, I think that's I think that's close to my only reasonable move here. So I will play that, and my opponent will go into deep thought. And if you don't know, that's a little pun because uh, Deep Blue's predecessor was called Deep Thought. And uh, if you want to learn about the history of computer chess that actually started 250 years ago, believe it or not, I have a video. 
video on my channel called The History of Computer Chess Sleep Documentary that you can go and watch. It's some of the work that I'm most proud of. Uh, some of the, I, like, I put so much research time and editing time and, you know, into making that video and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Not a perfect video, of course, but yeah. If I were to recommend any one video on my channel, it would be that one. Okay. So what will my opponent do in this position? Will it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not he, it's not she, it's not they, it's, it's it now, <laughs> it's a thing. against a thing, playing uh, an intellectual game created by humans against a piece of plastic. Okay, yeah, we see uh, knight to c6, that makes a lot of sense. So attacking, uh, further attacking this uh, pawn. And uh, I am not sure how I can survive this. Uh, let's say I play pawn, this pawn, one square forward. Does that work? Pawn on, takes, takes, takes. Maybe that works. I advance the pawn. struggling to find any other uh, moves even. Um, so that is what I will do. I will play e5 here. change and um, yeah yeah I, I don't think I think I am um, I made a uh, I made a uh, an AI blunder when I uh, when my opponent got out of book when it stopped responding immediately and it played a move that was slightly out of book I should have played e5 or I should have done something to avoid it finding this uh, positional plan that is the idea of the, I should not have allowed the idea of the Grunfeld. Uh, if I had somehow stopped the idea of the Grunfeld, I would have made basically uh, its four opening moves sort of, uh, sort of lose their bite in a way. Now I think I actually am in a bit of trouble because of particularly because of this bishop here. The bishop on, on d3 just seems misplaced. I think it should have, should have been on, on e2. Now my opponent's bishop goes to Six. Bishop to e6. That is a little bit odd to me, I must say. Um, it could, of course, be threatening to capture the a2 pawn, but that would go into a self pin against the queen. Um, other than that, I don't really get... Is it because it wants to go to d5? To maybe threaten this knight? I guess that could be it. I will, uh, I will come. 
possible. Wrong, but you followed it. it your intuition. 
revision self-corrects and um, and then the next time it will be more correct so you're training your intuition which is like training a neural network like literally <laughs> um, training a neural network which is very topical for this chess computer that probably does not have a neural network that's probably not how it was programmed you know we should do a video where we take it apart see uh, what it's made of okay let's see it plays it says um, bishop on e6 to f5 that uh, I am very happy to see that that is probably just a terrible move I can capture that bishop it will have to recapture with the pawn the king's safety will be compromised the awesome triangle that makes the bunker for the sniper bishop will be uh, destroyed and I can uh, start an attack against the king so I will make a quick decision here and capture this bishop I feel so much more confident now uh, in this game uh, because uh, the unless of course there's just some crazy but there's no there's no tactics here it's going to recapture um, um, then um, then it it means that the my opponent is not superhumanly strong because that was a mistake that was just simply a mistake a positional mistake that it played there um, okay so it plays pawn takes f5 it's just a recapture very simple and uh, let's just put these so you can see position is not even I will bet my head that uh, white has an advantage um, strong pawn center and a compromised castle king remember that this is a bishop it is not a tall pawn um, I would love in this position to play bishop h6 Bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop, and then the queen is no longer protecting c3. Queen comes in and captures the c3. Uh, now the queen and the knight have ganged up on the d4 pawn that will follow next. Um, and the question though is, can I in that position play knight to g5 with a checkmate? So bishop h6, bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop, queen takes pawn, knight g5, threatening checkmate. How are you defending that checkmate? I am not sure that you are defending that checkmate. Also intuitively it feels it feels right. Feels like the move to play. Um, um, yeah, it just feels like uh, what's called for in this position. And maybe the ma machine will prove me wrong and we will then uh, improve our intuition um, very curious so the critical line of course is if it takes if bishop takes bishop I will have to recapture with the queen and if my checkmating thread does not work I'm in big trouble because of the undefended c3 pawn um, but Obviously, if my checkmate thread works, then I'm probably just winning uh, because I'm not even sure how how you would defend against that thread. So uh, the computer is calculating um, my guess. 
guess as to how this is programmed is that it has some simple uh, chip um, some ARM processor or something uh, and there is just a very very small uh, program uh, written that just does a minimax search and it has like a small small database with openings and uh, it does a minimax search and it has like a couple of very rudimentary positional ideas it plays it does play bishop takes uh, bishop so it is testing me it is not trusting me so i will recapture get in with the queen and here we have to figure out what defense it uh, it has come up with what is the defense is it something like f6 that feels not really possible that f6 could work because i could play uh, if it plays f6 here i could play e6 so he pushes this pawn if not he it pushes this pawn and then i would push that pawn and uh, still have a strong attack against against the king um, and if we see queen takes c3 um, then of course knight to g5 and then i'm really curious like how are you ever going to stop checkmate on h h7 so either i am completely missing something in the position uh, or the computer just missed this uh, this idea this could be uh, this could be an example of what is known as the horizon problem which is that um, the computer does uh, iterative deepening so it looks ahead some moves it evaluates the position then it looks ahead some more moves okay we see here it does play f6 it plays f7 pawn to f6 okay so the horizon problem in chess computing is that from let's say from this position the computer looks some moves ahead evaluates find out which of the position it looked at it had to it has to explore uh, deeper and then it goes on like that but because of exponential growth uh, it's just there's just a limit to how deep it can get and maybe the crucial aspect of a sequence of moves is one move beyond the horizon is one move beyond how f how uh, how uh, how deep it calculated so in this position here and and maybe i am just completely missing the mark but i thought i could play either pawn to e6 or knight to h4 going for the uh, f5 square now threatening checkmate on g7 instead of h7 um, i could also just protect this pawn with like playing rook uh, maybe rook f to c1 or play rook, uh, rook a to c1 to um, just give up this pawn say that no problem um, wow stormy weather i choose to believe that it is the voice of kaisa the chess goddess uh, who uh, who is cheering for her human champion <laughs> as much as the human champion of Kaisa. <laughs> no, I, I guess uh, that's slightly overestimating my um, skills and importance to chess. Anyways, um, I kind of like Night Age Paul because
us. So let's say queen takes c3, knight takes f5, um, then if rook f7 to defend the checkmate, I can actually play e6 to, to sort of yeah, just capture that rook. So knight, knight h4 could be really good here. Um, how? Knight h4, but of course no, because then, uh, then f takes e5, opening up uh, defense from the rook on f5, of course. So that's the point of black's defense here. Um, if I defend the c3, Let's say I play, I, I play rook f to c1, f takes, no it can't play f takes because then I just go with the knight. So I think actually I will in this position just defend the c3 pawn. Like this. Okay. I feel like I have an advantage, but it, it did play a defense that I just um, not able to just uh, crack immediately at least. Um, so and that's one thing actually also well, with the computers, let's say you're playing some chess computer advantage and all of a sudden it gets hard it's like super hard to um, oh it does play if takes that is concerning okay let's see if takes e5 all of a sudden you're just close to checkmate it gets really hard to finish the game and then what's that about and uh, it's about that if the computer is even is set to easy let's say it can calculate four moves ahead. Um, that's not that much, but if one of those moves is checkmate, it will do literally anything but allow a checkmate in the next four moves. The computer will only allow checkmate in four moves if it's if that's the only if, if checkmate is inevitable. So uh, so even a computer searching a low depth can be pretty pretty tough to uh, actually checkmate if you're not uh, strong. Now let's see if that's correct. So my idea here was to play knight to g5, a threatening checkmate. And how do you, how do you stop that? You could play, um, you could make an exchange sacrifice, rook f7, I would then capture that king takes I would capture a pawn I would like do all sorts of stuff um, I could also play knight takes e5 then knight takes e5 then um, no then the check doesn't work because the knight can go here so I guess my only, my only real shot here is to actually go for the checkmate. So, okay, uh, chessman elite, what is your defense? What did you find against this that, um, that I missed?
is it going to be? Queen can't get back. King can't. It's it is rook. It's rook f7. So I was thinking that I can just capture that. Um, now I am up material. Um, there is no question about what the computer will do. It will recapture my knight. I will then be up the exchange and I can capture this pawn with a check. And I have a winning advantage now. So let me just quickly check if there's something else I need to do or take into consideration. I don't think so. So queen takes pawn. Check. I am now up a bunch of material. Uh, uh, what it, the king goes to f6 wants to protect the pawn that was attacked. make my game a little bit easier. It's a little bit uh, it a sort of a quality of life decision there. Not going for maximum advantage, but probably just getting uh, an easier position to uh, grind out. So what will we see? It's, it's because of these two rooks, you see. So I'm up material, but these two rooks are um, kind of passive, defending these pawns. So by opening up the center, I hope to uh, be able to centralize them on D and E and, uh, and uh, get them active. And something like that. So the only two moves that I can imagine the computer would play is either queen takes pawn or knight takes pawn. And that is exactly what the computer is doing. So, what will we do? Um, I 
with the king. And then what? Then what? Uh, then what are you going to do? scary that it just played uh, that it just played uh, that move just allowing me potentially just winning a piece that is a little scary but I don't see let's see if it can tell us I don't see how um, I don't see how it's surviving this um, I just um, like there's these checks but other than that the queen is not doing anything check king moves and then then what how do you improve the queen like what does that do I can't find anywhere to sign I can't find a way to get a back rank made I can't find I can't really find any way for the computer to to stop this so it plays something with the queen queen to c5 check okay so that is not surprising and we just wanted to play the king too H, um, H1. Um, so we just do that. Um, and now what? What is the big plan here? Um, rook D5. I take with the captures with the rook so rook d5 pawn takes rook takes threatening the queen but the queen just moves somewhere and then, then I'm just up a lot of material I'm up an entire rook and a pawn okay so it does play rook d5 we are doing a very good job I must say um, at a very good job at uh, figuring out uh, what moves the our silicon friend is um, is going to we are predicting we are doing very well at predicting the moves that's what it's called and um, we now have a was correct and um, um, how about just something really simple like queen d2 and rook e1 just getting the last pieces of the board I think queen d2 is pretty good uh, because if rook then we have a check up here so I think we'll just go for that um, and then what we want to do is we want to get activate these two rocks they haven't been doing much just defending these two pawns now we need to get them into the game exchange one of them off one and exchange uh, the queens off and then just win with the rook so we haven't won the game and we shouldn't celebrate before we have won the game but what we have done is we have shown that we can gain a, a winning advantage against this silicon mind this thing if you want me to do a video where we take this thing apart and just see what, what how it's made um, okay just 
gorgeous man. Do you know what? Uh, something interesting I read uh, on the researchers who, um, I'll just move to this here, Rook to Evil, okay, sensible move, uh, on the researchers who built uh, the Maniac computer um, that played the first game of chess, I mean it wasn't real chess, it was a clerical chess on a 6x6 board, anti-clerical chess I mean, on a 6x6 board with no bishops, because the computer literally didn't have enough memory for the entire chess board. Uh, but their research notes, I read their research notes, and they were hilarious. They, um, they were writing about how uh, the opponents who played against the computer would speak to the computer, and they would be like, they were so surprised that, um, because to them it was like they had built it, it was a physical thing of wires, knots, and bolts, you know, and uh, why would you speak to that, why would you say, oh, what do you think of this move and that, and, and nowadays, because, like, they were just so curious and, and, and surprised by, like, the psychology of the human interacting with the artificial intelligence, which, of course, we are so used to today, that was just, that's kind of interesting, okay, here, I think I have an easy move I'll play, uh, Rook e1 uh, in order to force a trade of these two uh, rooks and then uh, then the game should be easier um, uh, I mean I don't expect it, that the machine captures on e1 but I'm going to capture on on evil machine doesn't seem to have any real counterplay. After I have uh, captured on e4, I, play, I can play queen to d4. It plays pawn to b5. Yeah, I guess it has to do something, but uh, let's just make our life easier and simplify the position here. And it really shouldn't be thinking that much <laughs> over this move because obviously if takes the rook is the correct move and uh, I will not play queen d5 just because I don't want it to exchange queens and then have two passed pawns. I mean it's not going to be tough to to defend against it, uh, but I will, I will just play rook e1 first to just attack this pawn. Uh, because it, it can't really be defended very well, I think. Uh, can't be defended by the king because then I have a queen check and exchanging the queens and that would be game. So, 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 what can my opponent figure out in this position? Wow, we're getting a little uh, sort of lecture in closing games here against uh, stiff opposition, like uh, against a human. Uh, you have this. What? You have this th this thing where when your advantage is big enough, sometimes they just crumble. But the computer is, I was going to say that the computer has an even playing strength throughout the game. Uh, so it makes it hard for you to actually finish the game, but it's playing like a really weird move here. That is a very, very, very weird move. I can capture with the queen. which would exchange the queens, which would win the game on the spot. So, or I could capture with the rook, which is also 
winning I'll just capture with the queen that is um, just the easiest win um, it had machine has to play um, exchange like this and I will then capture like that that is check It's not a very good technique. Uh, the, the computer seems to computer seems to be uh, horrible at the uh, end game technique. Gate captures this pawn. That is fine. I will. So 
check and king to b8 and rook e8 and that is the game thank you very much to uh, chessman elite uh, and thank you very much to all of you guys who have watched and who are commenting and liking and subscribing that is amazing uh, I mean you guys are the best you're giving me all this joy with this channel I'm so happy thank you so much I hope I will see you in the next video thanks for watching